right, everybody, uh, back in the shop today. Um, we're going to do some puzzles today. I've made a lot of these uh, simple uh, wooden puzzles for children over the years. These only got three, four pieces. They're fun to make. Um, uh, I want to just go over a little bit about where I get these patterns and uh, stuff like that. So the patterns for these particular puzzles came out of a book I got. Um, it's a Patrick and Patricia Spillman book. I think I got this out of a, a woodworking uh, store, I think. Most of your woodworking stores have areas where they sell woodworking books, but they got all kinds of puzzles in it. Um, you can also buy books um, online from Amazon. Here's one, um, uh, different puzzles, Noah's Ark. It's got all different puzzles in there. Here's a book on Zodiac puzzles. Got that off Amazon. And then here's one on different dinosaurs. And um, they're all different sizes, different number of pieces. Um, as far as the wood that you want to use to do these puzzles, you're going to see in my past videos, I've already talked about um, quality pine. I use a lot of three-quarter inch select pine. That's what I like using for these uh, puzzles. It's three-quarter inch. It comes in sizes, all different sizes, one by twos all the way up to one by twelves. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive than um, uh, construction grade lumber, but now you can use construction grade lumber. The only thing I don't like about the construction grade lumber, which is a lot cheaper, is that it's got the knots in it, splits, it's got imperfections in it. You're always trying to lay your puzzle where it's going to miss this and miss that. So I don't, I don't like doing that. So I just buy this rear clear pine. Nothing wrong with it. It's no knots, no nothing in it that's real terrible. And that's what I use for my puzzles. Now, uh, Baltic birch is another uh, good uh, lumber to use for puzzles. I've done a lot of board puzzles, ABC puzzles, number puzzles with Baltic birch. The only thing you got to remember with Baltic birch is um, it's a plywood, so you got to make sure the edges are sanded real nice. Um, you got to remember these puzzles are going to kids, so you don't want slivers and all that stuff. But Baltic birch is a good uh, lumber to use for puzzles. Just that that is going to probably be a little bit more expensive than this. But um, you're going to have to make a choice on uh, the lumber you want to use. And then also um, the printing. Now, there's so many places to get these puzzles. You can go on Pinterest. You can go different websites, um, magazine subscriptions, got puzzles in them. You can get, you can make copies from your uh, printer at home. I like to make copies, you know, eight and a half by 11 paper. I'll copy the puzzles, you know, and if I want to make three puzzles, I'll print out three or whatnot. Um, I usually save a master copy in my fat filing cabinet so I got one so I don't lose it because I don't want, I might have not know where I got the puzzle from online. So I save a master copy. Now, if you're going to make a lot of these puzzles, like I will make 20, 25, 30 of these puzzles. So instead of me printing them all out on my printer, which takes a lot of ink, I will um, go down to my local print shop in town and I'll have them print out 25 copies, 50 copies of any puzzle that I uh, get. So that's how I do it. But if you're only going to make one or two puzzles, you can print them out in your printer and, and you got it. But just remember, um, keep a master copy someplace. That way, um, if you ever lose your pattern, you got it someplace, whether it's in a filing cabinet. I got all these copies of these puzzles on my computer, on files. So I'll always have this pattern. Um, so once you got your pattern, um, in my past videos, you're going to see that um, I've used blue tape on the lumber. I'd put the blue tape on, and I'd put the pattern on that. On that. Then I would put uh, clear packaging tape over the top of that. I don't do that with these particular puzzles because the pieces are so big, and this pattern comes right off anyway. It's just a, I use a temporary uh, adhesive spray adhesive if you can see that uh, to put these patterns on 
Um, I make so many of these puzzles, it would take forever to tape all this lumber up and do all these puzzles. So these big pieces like this, I don't tape my patterns, but you're gonna, if you look at my other videos, you're gonna see me have tape on. That's because there's a lot of small little parts in my scroll saw work, and I like to have the tape and then the, the clear tape over the top because that you can get your pattern off real easy without breaking a piece, but you're not gonna break these pieces. These are pretty big parts, so. I don't use any blue tape. I just use the glue and spray it right on the board. Uh, you can use a heat gun or mineral spirits to get the pattern off if you want to. Most cases after you get done cutting this, this will peel right off. So that'll take care of that. So I got this already attached to my wood. This is the whale one and this is the alligator one attached to the wood. And I wanna say another thing too. These puzzles, this particular puzzle here with the alligator, this is about a three inch puzzle height. So, and this is a one by four piece of select pine. So this particular puzzle and this one here, because it fits on this one by four pine, I call these one by four puzzles. So I'll have a whole bunch of these puzzles that are this size and they fit on this board. So I'll put them in my filing cabinet as one by four puzzles. Now, if this puzzle was a little taller and it didn't fit on this board, I'd move up to the next size of lumber, which is a one by six. That would fit, and then that puzzle would be a one by six puzzle, and so forth. Bigger would be one by eight and one by 10. So that's how I categorize my puzzles when I put them in my filing cabinet. So if I wanna make a whole bunch of one by four puzzles, all I gotta do is buy a one by four piece of wood. I know they're all gonna fit on there as far as the height. The length really don't matter, the height. If I wanna do a bunch of one by six puzzles, I'll buy a one by six board, which is actually five and a half inches. And if they fit on there, that's a one by six puzzle. So that's how I do it. That's just a little tip. Um, that way you're not guessing on what size of lumber you need to uh, buy to make that particular size of puzzle. And, um, so that, that works good for me. So I have already put these patterns on these pieces of wood and there are no inside cuts you have to do. Uh, we're gonna head over to the scroll saw and talk a little bit and then get these cut out. Okay, we are at the scroll saw here. Um, we're going to cut out this alligator first here, there's three pieces. Um, I have a number seven I have a number seven screw saw blade in here, reverse tooth. Uh, you could probably get away with um, a number five reverse tooth for years I've used a number seven reverse tooth um, we're just gonna use number seven today um, I've had no problem with them on um, and these puzzles here now what I like to do is cut out the outside of this complete puzzle first um, and then I'll do the in I'll do the puzzle parts and also and I didn't mention it when I was telling you about gluing the pattern on here, but anytime the puzzle has like a flat area on it, like here's his feet, I try to get that lined right up at the bottom of the board. That's just that much less I gotta cut. Even with this uh, whale puzzle, the bottom of the whale is flat, so I took my scissors and cut the pattern and put that on the bottom, so I just have to cut up here. I don't have to try to make a straight line with my saw. So that's what I do. So I'm going to start cutting this out. And these really don't take that long to cut out.
Okay, so we got the alligator puzzle cut out. Now I want to say too, and I didn't I didn't say it before. If you're gonna do a whole bunch of these puzzles, I like to cut the outsides of these puzzles out, all of them at once. Use one blade to do all the outside cuts. I'm gonna cut this one here next. I'm gonna do the outside cuts, and let's say I got ten more to go. I'm gonna keep on doing the outside cuts. And before I start doing the puzzling, I'll change my blade. I'll put a nice sharp blade in and do my puzzling because you want a nice 90 degree. You want your blade to be nice and sharp and 90 degree and make that cut right there so it doesn't affect the way your puzzles go slide in and out. So we're going to cut the whale out here. And then the reason why I took this whale and this alligator puzzle too, I want to explain See this alligator, you cut it out, you got one, two, three pieces. The whale puzzle right here, now I'm going to cut it out, but I'm going to have to cut this piece off first to be able to get to this piece. And I'll explain that later, but we're going to cut this out first. Okay, so we got the whale cut out on this alligator now you're gonna see I did not do any of these uh, detail lines right here um, as I was cutting it out because you don't want to go in there and then back out and try to get back around so you leave the detail lines to last it's a lot easier just to go in there and cut these lines without having to try to do it when you're going around the whole puzzle so we'll cut these um, apart now, I'm going to use the same blade because we're only talking two puzzles. But like I said, if you're going to do a whole bunch of puzzles, cut them all out first and then change the blade and go back and do your puzzling with a new blade. So now, before I will puzzle these apart, I'm going to go and cut my uh, detail lines. Okay, so once my detail lines are cut, I'm just going to go ahead and puzzle these out. Now, you just want to make sure, like I said, a sharp blade, but you want to take your time. Let the blade do the cutting because you don't want to push and bow that blade because you want these parts to come in and out real easy without being tapered in any way. to do is try it see now it needs to go in from both directions that'll be a nice cut right there So right here see goes in from both directions so that's a nice cut so that puzzle is 
all cut apart. Now at the wheel, um, some of your puzzles are going to have more parts. Now I could cut this tail out first, but I'm not going to, the next part I got to cut out is this top piece because I don't want to cut in here and then come to a stop and then have to turn right in the middle of this, this uh, part right here. So what I'm going to do is either cut this top piece off first or cut the tail off first. If I cut the top piece off right here, then I can get at this right here. I'll show you. Okay, so with that top piece cut off and out of the way, I can get at the next one and come with a clean cut right down. And every once in a while, try your parts just to make sure your blade's not getting too dull to uh, puzzle these apart. Okay, so... We got this all cut apart right here. Now, you, I don't know if you're hearing a lot of vibration on my saw. I got some board shelves on the bottom that are vibrating, but everything's working fine. So, yeah, we got this all cut apart. Now, the, the more pieces you have in a puzzle, the more you're going to have to actually look at your puzzle and determine which part of it you're going to have to cut off first to get to another puzzle piece to start another cut. So it, it, the more pieces you got, the more you're going to have to be uh, look at it and see how you're going to cut it out. So we'll head, head over to the workbench, take the paper off, and uh, finish these up. Okay, so I took the paper all off these... Uh, Puzzle pieces, I used a hair dryer or a heat gun to take them off. It leaves a little bit of a sticky uh, residue on the pieces. So the sand, all we got left here is the sanding to do. And I just, this is a, a 220 piece of sandpaper. I'm going to just sand all the pieces in front and back really nice. And then you're going to take and soften up all these edges on this puzzle best you can. Just 
just get all the sharp areas off of it. And that's what's nice about using this this quality pine because it's already real nice wood, so it don't take much to sand it. And there you have the alligator. And we'll do the same thing with the whale. Soften up these edges just a little bit. And I, I will say, uh, my wife does most of the sanding. So she's really more particular about the sanding than I probably am. So We'll get the whale together. All right, so alligator puzzle, whale puzzle. Okay, so we did the alligator puzzle, if you can see that, and we did the whale puzzle. Uh, these are fun to make. It's a good a project to do if you're just starting out on the scroll saw. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, give me a thumbs up. Um, that helps my videos. I do have more videos coming out in the future. And make sure you comment below because uh, I will answer any comments I get. So until then, uh, work safe and have fun.